interesting, um, Gaz, um, again this week, is um, um, I was sent another clip of uh, Kerry Mullis, the man who invented the PCR test, which is used, uh, being used, um, to decide if people are a case infected or not. And the quote uh, in this uh, video clip from uh, Kerry Mullis said this, with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. I'm going to come to why in a second. But you can find almost anything in anybody. This is uh, why uh, people are pointing out, the doctors uh, that have come out and challenged the narrative, are pointing out that um, the more you amplify the test, um, the more positives you get. Um, and eventually, if you amplify the test enough, everyone will test positive, but not for the virus, for genetic material, as I'll come to in a second. And this is the, the test that will have said, Mr. Trump, Mrs. Trump, you've got the virus. And um, so this fake test is being used around the world to, to um, trigger fake cases, which aren't cases at all, which produce the excuse for all this fascism that's going on, on the basis, oh, the cases are going up. And by the way, have you noticed, uh, Gaz, that um, the cases are going up and up and up, um, according to their figures, since mandatory masks came in. So um, they obviously work. But I've got a quote here from uh, Dr. Andrew Kaufman, of course, has been at the front line from a medical point of view of, uh, of challenging the official narrative. And it's, it's a great quote because what he's describing here is how they have um, concluded that there is a virus. And it's, it's a theme that I, I've been pushing, of course, since, um, since March, that they've never shown it to exist. And when you read this quote of how they actually compile what they, they call the, um, the code of the virus, it's sh shocking. And you add this to the fact that they're testing for this virus, which they've never shown to exist, with a test that's not testing for the virus. I mean, you know, you're, you're in the land of, of, of cuckoos and fairies. And this is the whole basis of, of the justification of fascism. So this is what he said, um, Dr. Kaufman. The PCR test doesn't test for a virus at all. What that tests for is a sequence of RNA, which is genetic material. And the way they obtain that is also they take the impure sample, basically like the lung fluid in this case from some people who are sick or possibly a throat swab, and they amplify short little sequences this is very important, short little sequences of this genetic material and sequences that are specifically looking, uh, they're looking for mostly because they have this library of gene sequences of viruses. But the thing is, if you go back, they've always characterized them in the same way. Uh, in other words, where they say this SARS-CoV-2 virus is like the SARS-CoV-1, shall we call it. Actually, it's not in genetic terms, but they say it is. Well, they concluded that SARS-CoV-1 existed and all these other previous um, virus uh, scares, they concluded that they existed in the same way that they are concluding that this one does. So um, he goes on. So they've never once had an intact virus particle and then sliced it open, taken the RNA out and done a sequence from end to end. In other words, the entire uh, uh, genetic code sequence of what they claim is uh, the virus. That's never been done. 
What they do instead is they take this impure sample and they look for specific sequences that they've pre-identified as being viral in nature from the database, which they compiled in the same way that they're doing this. And then what they're doing is amplifying these short little sequences, maybe 150, 250 base pairs, and they're splicing them together into one long strand of 30,000. You know, it's like you know, getting little bits of things, you know, it's like a, put, putting Lego bricks together. Oh, here's one, stick that in, that'll fit. Um, and they say that's the viral genome, but it's actually just this Frankenstein type of assembly of all these little pieces that we don't ha uh, even have proof are related. They could even come from different types of cells or different creatures. And when there's gaps, they're basically using sequences that they get from that database of other viruses that are also put together in this Frankenstein type way. And they sew all these together and say that this is the genome sequence of the virus. Breathe, Dave, breathe. <laughs> 